Ryan Howard. For a time, no Philly had hit a baseball as far as Howard could, at least not since Dick Allen was on the team. And for a while, no Philly had hit the ball out of the ballpark as often as Howard did, not even the great Mike Schmidt. The fans adored Howard and the excitement he brought to Citizens Bank Park, and rightly so. But injury and an inability to adjust to defensive arrangements against him meant that his momentum could not be sustained. Still, at his peak, Howard gave Phillies fans seven magical seasons, outpacing all others in the frequency at which his batted balls left the ballpark. Welcome to Philadelphia Baseball History. Don't forget to check out our merchandise. T-shirts, phone cases, masks, notebooks, mugs, and much more. Just go to tpublic.com and look for Philadelphia baseball history. The year was 1994. In October of that year, the Phillies granted 33-year-old John Kruk free agency. Kruk had spent six years with the Phillies, posting a batting average of 309. This began the decade-long downward spiral for the Phillies at first base. Dave Hollins, Greg Jeffords, Rico Bronia, Pat Burrell, Travis Lee. Stability at first base eluded the team. And then, an opportunity arose before the 2003 season. Longtime Cleveland first baseman Jim Tomey, who had already amassed over 300 career home runs, became available on the free agency market. Tomey accepted a six-year, $85 million deal with the Phillies. To Phillies fans' delight, Tomey brought his bat to Philadelphia. In the 2003 and 2004 seasons, Tomey hit 47 and 41 home runs respectively. Tomey had quickly become a fan favorite. In the June of 2001 draft, the Phillies used their fifth round draft pick to select first baseman Ryan Howard. Playing a total of 172 games for Missouri State University, Howard had a batting average of 335 and had amassed 50 home runs and 183 RBIs. Howard was immediately assigned to play short season A ball with the Batavia Muck Dogs. Howard progressed, batting 280 in A ball with Lakewood in 2002 and then 304 in advanced A ball with Clearwater in 2003. In 2004, Howard crushed out 34 home runs with Redding in 102 games. He was promoted to Triple-A Scranton Wilkesbury, hitting nine home runs over 29 games. This was enough to earn Howard a September call-up to the Major League team. In September of 2004, Howard hit his first two Major League home runs with the Phillies. In the minds of some Phillies fans, this created a controversy at first base. Howard was tearing apart double-A, averaging a home run every 10 at-bats. Even after being promoted to triple-A, Howard was averaging a home run every 12 at-bats. To put this into perspective, in his Hall of Fame of career with the Phillies, Mike Schmidt averaged a home run every 15 at-bats. Yet Jim Tomey, was only in his second year of a long-term contract. He hit over 40 home runs for two straight seasons and had become a fan favorite. So long as Tomey was at first base, Ryan Howard would be blocked from being promoted to the major leagues. Here I am, once again, the solution presented itself to the Phillies in 2005, although not in the most pleasant of circumstances. Tomey began having back problems almost as soon as the season began. His production fell off, and eventually, 
Tomey found that he needed elbow surgery. Jim Tomey played his last game of the 2005 season on June 30th. By August, he would have season-ending elbow surgery. Howard had first been called up on May 3rd, 2005, the first time that Tomey went on the disabled list. But it took Howard two weeks to get his sea legs. Howard's first home run of the 2005 season didn't come until May 17th, which is about the time that his bat started to wake up. But Tomey returned from the disabled list on May 21st. To make room for him on the 25-man roster, the Phillies sent Howard back down to scranton Wilkesbury. By July 1st, however, Tomey's health problems again landed him on the disabled list. Howard was recalled from the Red Barons, and by July 2nd, had become the Phillies' starting first baseman for the rest of the season. What followed was pure magic. On July 3rd, 2005, while playing the Atlanta Braves, Howard hit a three-run home run. It was his second home run on the season. Soon, Howard was hitting home runs in the major leagues almost at the same pace that he had been hitting them in the minors. When he finally left Scranton Wilkesbury, Howard had already amassed 16 home runs over 61 games. He was knocking out the long ball at a rate of one every 13 at bats. In the majors, he averaged a round tripper once in every 14 at bats. By the end of the season, playing in only 86 major league games, Ryan Howard had hit 22 home runs and knocked in 63 RBIs. Averaged over a 160 game season, Ryan Howard was on a pace to hit 41 home runs and 118 RBIs. And so, even though he played a little more than half of the season, Ryan Howard won the National League's 2005 Rookie of the Year Award. By the end of the season, the Phillies decided to move on from Jim Tomey. One major factor was his continued problems with his back. This impacted his ability to play defense. The White Sox, however, were in need of a designated hitter to replace the aging Frank Thomas. And so the Phillies traded Tomey to Chicago in exchange for Aaron Wowand and a number of minor league pitchers. But to entice the White Sox to take on the remaining three years of Tomey's big contract, the Phillies also gave Chicago $22 million in cash. The transaction cleared the way for Ryan Howard to take his place as the Phillies' everyday first baseman. And neither the Phillies nor Ryan Howard regretted that decision. As good as Ryan Howard's rookie season was, he was just getting started. In 2006, at age 27, Howard shattered the single season home run record held by a Philly. That Philly was Hall of Famer Mike Schmidt, who had launched 48 dingers in 1980. Howard not only topped 50, he came close to reaching Babe Ruth and Roger Maris numbers, hitting an astounding 58 home runs. He had returned to the pace he set in Reading two years previously, hitting a home run in every tenth at bat. His RBI total was an amazing 149. Howard led the majors in home runs, RBIs, and total bases that year, all while hitting 313. Howard even arose victorious in the All-Star Break Home Run Derby, the second year in a row that a Philly had won that contest. Not only did Howard win the National League MVP award that year, but he took his place among Jimmy Rollins, another former NL MVP, Chase Utley, Pat Burrell, and Cole Hamels. All were young, homegrown talent playing at the top of their game. With all of this homegrown talent in the Phillies dugout, Ryan Howard appeared to be the final piece, the big piece that the Phillies needed to make a run at a world championship. 
all of this combined in 2007 with four words that can bring a smile to any Phillies fan. Late season Mets collapse. By September 12, 2007, the Mets had a seemingly insurmountable lead in the NL East of seven games. But the Mets lost 12 of their remaining 17 games. Meanwhile, the Phillies turned up the heat, sweeping the Mets and then winning series after series against the Cardinals and then the Nationals and then the Braves and then the Nationals again. The Phillies went 13-5 and five as the ground beneath the Mets was collapsing. When the dust had cleared, the Phillies had captured the division with a win over the Nationals on the last game of the season. Howard had three RBIs that day, including a seventh inning solo home run. In fact, during the 18-game stretch where the Phillies overtook the Mets, Howard blasted nine home runs, knocked in 21 runs, and walked 18 times. He ended the season with 47 home runs and 136 RBIs, averaging a home run every 11 at-bats. Ryan Howard's tear continued. In the Phillies World Championship year 2008, Howard banged out 48 home runs and 136 RBIs, leading the majors in both categories. In the World Series, he hit three home runs and knocked in six RBIs. In 2009, Howard went yard 45 times and led the majors with 141 RBIs. In the 2009 NLDS, he batted 375 with six RBIs, putting away Colorado. And in the NLCS, Howard had two home runs and eight RBIs, earning the series MVP award while retiring the LA Dodgers for the second season in a row. And while Howard cooled off in the 2009 World Series, so did most of the Phillies. Howard had reached the milestone of 100 home runs and then 200 home runs faster than any other player in Major League history. In 2010, his third All-Star year, Howard cooled off a bit, only hitting 31 home runs and knocking in 108 RBIs. But given the pace that he was racking up the long ball, the future seemed bright indeed. To keep him in a Phillies uniform, the front office signed Howard to a five-year, $25 million contract extension. And in 2011, he didn't let up. He hit another 33 home runs and racked up another 116 RBIs. But the 2011 postseason was a major disappointment for Phillies fans. The team had entered the season with such high hopes, bragging of the four aces, a starting pitching rotation that included Cole Hamels, Cliff Lee, Roy Halladay, and Roy Oswald, all of whom could be the staff ace on any other team. And during the regular season, the Phillies broke their franchise win record with 102 victories. But the Phillies limped into the postseason, having captured the NL East in mid-September. Manager Charlie Manuel took the opportunity to rest his key players before the playoffs, a move that resulted in the team losing momentum. They were upset in the first round of the playoffs by the wildcard Cardinals team. Worse yet, Ryan Howard ruptured his Achilles tendon on the very last play of the 2011 NLDS. It was an injury that normally takes a year or more to recover from, and for some players, recovery never comes. But even before his 2011 injury, there were some warning signs that Howard's pace was unsustainable. For one thing, as a left-handed power hitter, more and more teams would regularly use an infield shift against Howard, overloading the right side of the infield, expecting him to pull the ball. In the 2011 season, despite hitting 33 home runs, Howard's batting average plummeted to 253. In addition, throughout his career, Howard showed a significant drop when batting against left-handed pitchers. As a general matter, 
right-handed batters tend to do better against left-handed pitchers, and left-handed batters tend to do better against right-handed pitchers. This is because when the batter faces the pitcher who uses the opposite dominant hand, they get a split second longer to see the ball. This extra split second helps the hitter recognize what kind of pitch it is and judge where the pitch is going to wind up when it reaches home plate. But generally speaking, depending on the year, the average hitter's batting average varied between 15 to 25 points when facing right-handed as opposed to left-handed pitchers. The problem for Howard was that his drop-off between right-handed and left-handed pitchers tended to be much greater than 25 points. In his Rookie of the Year season, for example, Howard batted 333 against right-handed pitchers, but 148 against left-handers. In his MVP season, he improved a bit, but his average against righties, 297, was over 70 points greater than his average against lefties, 225. And with the exception of two seasons, 2010 and 2014, this was a consistent problem. At the end of his career, there was a full 60-point difference between Howard's performance against right-handers and his performance against left-handers. Why wait to say, at least I did in my way, these three factors, a difficult recovery from a devastating injury, teams regularly employing a defensive shift against him, and the disparity between his performance against righties and lefties, all combined to depress Howard's offensive production over the final years of his contract. Never again would Howard hit more than 25 home runs in the season. Indeed, in 2012 and 2013, Howard failed to even reach 20 home runs. In 2014, Howard knocked in a respectable level of 95 RBIs, but that was more of an anomaly. His batting average peaked at 266 in 2013. Normally, Howard was struggling to stay 20 points above the Mendoza line. When the 2016 season came around, it was clear that the Phillies were not going to renew Howard's contract. Respectfully, the team held a ceremony at the end of the season to allow fans to thank Ryan Howard for all the excitement that he had given them in his 13 seasons with the team. His 382 home runs stand second only to Mike Schmidt on the team's career leader board. Howard would attempt a comeback, working hard in the offseason to regain his physical strength and athletic abilities. He signed with the Braves, and then with the Rockies, in an effort to kickstart his career. But even playing at AAA in the 2017 season, Howard failed to reach the Mendoza line. Ryan Howard was an exceptional player, one that brought Phillies fans a level of excitement they had not felt in 20 years. Without Ryan Howard, it is doubtful that the Phillies would have even sustained the success they had from 2007 through 2011. He was the final piece the Phillies needed to bring home only their second world championship in over 130 years of existence. The big piece, if you will. His contribution to Philadelphia baseball is a career that deserves to be remembered. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. If you have any ideas for topics that we can cover in the future, please let us know in the comments below. If you would like to see more of these videos, please consider becoming a patron through Patreon. Again, we'll have a link in the description box below.